Hi everyone! So a few days ago, on my What is This Monstrosity video, where I presented a poem from the JEE Advanced Exam that looked, well, advanced, someone wrote a comment, which I will show somewhere here if my editing skills are up to that yet, and that person, all, that person also sent me a problem, which I have written there on the board, which presumably comes from his or her JEE preparation textbook, along with the solution again from that textbook and that person said that he or she didn't understand understand the solution so well this is exactly the problem that we are going to solve today but before we do that i would like to mention that i have a problem suggestion form down there in the description which you can use to submit problems that that you want me to cover in, in potentially in a future video and with that out of the way let's get started so, let's see what our problem states. Let f of n denote the number of all non-negative integral solutions of the equation a plus b plus c plus b plus e equals n. If the value of the sum as r goes from 1 to 11 of r times f of 11 minus r is equal to p choose q, where p is greater than 10, q is greater than 6, and p and q are elements of the natural numbers, we want to find out what p plus q actually is. And before we, so we solve the problem, I would like to go over some notation that I'll be using, namely for the binomial coefficient, because some people, as they did in the textbook, use this notation right here, with a little p and then a c and then a q, but I'll be using this notation because it is the one I'm the most familiar with, but these, these two just mean the same thing, namely they both represent the binomial coefficient. And also right here, I've written down some useful formula that you know, dealing with sounds that we'll have to use throughout the problem. And with that out of the way, let's get started. First of all, we have to define non-negative integral solutions. Why? Because of zero. Some people consider zero as being both positive and negative, but some people also consider it to be neither positive nor negative. But but we'll choose zero to be non-negative because I think to be negative because I think that's what they also did in the textbook. Therefore, zero will not be allowed to be a solution to this equation. So, first, now that we have that cleared out of the way, we can finally start solving the actual problem. And to do that, it might be a good idea to find out what f of n actually is. And to do that, I would like to observe that every single positive integer n can be decomposed as 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus all the way to plus 1, a total of n times. And because ad addition is associated, we can group those ones together in order to form our a our b, our c, our d, and our e. Okay, so we can basically rephrase our definition for f of n as basically how many ways are there to partition a, a set of n elements, in this case our 1, into five different subsets with, with more than zero elements, or as, as some people, as you will also say it, a cardinality is strictly greater than zero. So, to do that, I would like to define a function, namely, let f k of n, it looks like I'm having a marker shortage, let f, f k of n be the number of ways to partition a set, partition a set, of n elements into five subsets into k subsets sorry into k subsets this means that our f of n will actually be f5 of n okay so why did I define this function well it is simply to help us take a look at some simpler cases, namely if you wanted to have only two numbers right here. So this means we will, we will solve for 
F2 of N. And to do that, I will draw out some elements of our set, which we will say that they are well, because it's summer and in summer people like to do sports and a lot of sports use ball. Also, by the way, yesterday the Tokyo Olympics ended, so we are going to use balls. Like this. So, let's say our first subset has A elements. This means the, our remaining subset will have N minus A elements. And now, our A can go anywhere from 1 to N minus 1. Because if A were to be 1, then this would be N minus 1. And if A were to be N minus 1, then this would be 1. Therefore, we have n minus 1 ways of partitioning in a set of n elements into two subsets. Therefore, f2 of n will be m n minus 1. And now, we will take a look at the slightly more complicated case of f3 of n. And to do that, again, we will draw our set of balls like this okay so let's say that that subset has a elements which means the remaining subset will have n minus a elements okay so we need to choose one of these subsets to leave it as it is and the other subsets to divide into two sub subsets such that we have a total of three subsets and we'll choose this one to divide into two subsets so let's say we put our line here. And now our A can go anywhere from 1 to N minus 2. And there is a plane going by. I don't know why there are so many planes going by these days. Okay, as I was saying, A can go from 1 to N minus 2 because if A were to be N minus 2, then this would be 2, which is our limiting case because then we would only have one way of partitioning our set into two subsets which would be 1 and 1, and if A were to be any larger, we would have to allow for 0 to be used, but again, we don't want that. Therefore, our F3 of N will be the sum as A goes from 1 to N minus 2 of N minus A minus 1, according to our F of F2 of N definition right here. And we, and we use the summation because it's to account for all the possible values of A. And now I would like to swap the minus 1 and the minus a such that we can group the n minus 1 together because n minus 1 is a constant with respect to a. And now you will break the summation into two. So our first summation will be with our summon will be n minus 1, which is, which is a constant in terms of a. Therefore, we can use this formula right here. So n minus 1 times n minus 2 minus and then for a second summation it is exactly of this form right here which means you can use this formula so it will be n minus 2 times n minus 1 all over 2 and now since n, mi n minus 1 times n minus 2 is equal to n minus 2 times n minus 1 we can do a common denominator for it to simplify down to n minus 1 times n minus 2 all over 2 Therefore, our f3 of n will be n minus 1 times n minus 2, let me do that parenthesis, all over 2. And now, we have all the information we need to find our f5 of n, which is exactly our f of n. But first, I will erase the board because, well, to do that, we need quite a lot of space. Okay, so now that we have our f2 of n and our f3 of n, we can start finding our f5 of n. And to do that, I would like to, as we did before, draw some balls to represent our set of n elements, like this. That's that one. Okay, so let's say this subset has a elements, which means this subset will have n <coughs> minus a elements and now we'll have to choose one of our subsets to partition into three subsets and the other to partition into two subsets such that we have five subsets in total and we will 
choose this one for three subsets and this one for two subsets. And now we know how to partition a set into three subsets. We have this formula right here. And likewise for a set of two, uh, for two subsets, we have this F2 of N formula right here. And our A can go anywhere from three since and since we partition that set into three subsets, this, the smallest we can have is three subsets of one, and it can go all the way to n minus two, such uh, because if this were to be n minus two, this would be two, which is the smallest way to partition a set into two subsets, namely one and one. And therefore, our f five of n will be the sum as a goes from three to n minus 2 of plugging a into this formula right here we get a minus 1 times a minus 2 all over 2 times plugging n minus a into this formula right here we get n minus a minus 1 okay so now our sum starts at 3 and all of our nice formula starts at 1 wouldn't it be nice if our sum did indeed start at 1 well, here's how we are going to make it start at 1. We will make it start at 1, and then we will subtract the first two terms. So this will be the sum as a goes from 1 to n minus 2 of this right here, minus the sum as a goes from 1 to 2 of a minus 1 times a minus 2 all over 2 times n minus a minus 1. And now, if we plug in a equals 1 into this, we will have a factor of 1 minus 1 right here, and 1 minus 1 is 0, therefore a equals 1 will vanish to 0. Likewise, for 2, if we plug in 2, we get 2 minus 2 right here, which goes to 0. Therefore, all of this summation evaluates to 0, which means the summation, our f of n won't change if we start the summation at 1. Okay. So now, I would like to factor that constant, that one half out of the interval, since it's a constant. And then, we will interchange v minus a and v minus 1, like, like before, such that we can group the a minus 1 together, since it's a constant with respect to a. And now, I would like to FOIL this a minus 1 times a minus 2 out, so we'll get the sum as a goes from 1 to n minus 2 of a squared minus 3a plus 2 of n minus 1 minus a. And now, we will multiply everything out. So we will get 1 half times the sum as a goes from 1 to n minus 2 of a squared times n minus 1 minus a cubed minus 3a times n minus 1 plus 3a squared plus 2 times n minus 1 minus 2a and now we will combine like terms so we will get 1 half times the sum as a goes from 1 to n minus 2 of and then for the a cubed term we have only one a cubed term and its coefficient is minus 1 so we will get minus 1 a cubed plus, and then for the a squared term, we'll get n minus 1 plus 3, which is n plus 2, so n plus 2 a squared. And then for our a terms, well, here for this coefficient to simplify, we'll drag the 3 in, in here, and then we'll, we will distribute the minus such that it becomes plus 3 minus 3. 3n, and now we will be left with a coefficient of 1 minus 3n because of the minus 2 for the a, and then our constant term 2n minus 1. And now we will break the summation into four parts and factor out the constant such that we can use this formula right and these formulas right here. So factoring out the minus 1, we get minus 1 half times the sum that's a goes from 1 to n minus 2 of a cubed. For which we can use this formula right here to get n minus 2 squared times n minus 1 squared all over 4 plus. And then we'll get 
I turn out the n plus 2, n plus 2 over 2 times, and then using this formula right here, n minus 1 times n minus 2 times 2 times n 2 times n minus 1 plus 1, which is 2n minus 2 plus 1, 2n minus 4 plus 1, which is wait, it starts n minus 2n minus 1, and times 2n minus 3 all over 6 plus, and then factor the 1 minus 3n out, 1 minus 3n over 2 times, and then for a term we'll have the sum as a equals from 1 to n, well, n minus 2, for which we can use this formula right here, so we'll get n minus 2 times n minus 1 all over 2, plus, and then the 2's will cancel out, and using this rule right here, we'll get n minus 2 times n minus 1. And now, we will multiply the denominators and the numerators, so for this one, the denominator will become 8, and there's a log truck going by, and we'll have a minus in front. And then for our second fraction, we'll have a 12 in the denominator because it's 2 times 6. And the n minus 2 will get multiplied. There's some weird notes outside, I don't know what it is, but well, let's not care about that. For our third term, we'll have 2 times 2, which is 4, and the 1 minus 3 gets multiplied as well. And our last term doesn't have a denominator. So, now I would like to add these four fractions together by finding a common denominator, and that common, de that common denominator will be 24. So, for this fraction, we will expand it by 3 over 3 for it to have a denominator of 24, like this. <coughs> and then for this fraction, we will expand it by 2 over 2. Well, we can get a 24 out of this. And then for the 4, we'll expand it by 6 over 6. And for our last term, we'll expand it by 24 all over 24. <coughs> and now we have an n minus 1 times n minus 2 distributed to all of our terms, which means we can. You know, also with the 1 over 24, which means we can factor it out <coughs> to get n minus 1 times n minus 2 all over 24 times. And then we'll have the minus 3 times n minus 2 times n minus 1 plus, right here we'll have 2n plus 2 to n minus 3, so 2 times n plus 2 times 2n minus 3 plus that parenthesis looks like a 1, and then plus 6 times 1 minus 3n for that term, plus, and then a 24. And now, n minus 2 times n minus 1, if we follow that out, we get n squared minus 3n plus 2. And then for this one right here, we get 2n squared plus n minus 6. And now we can distribute the constants n expand everything out so we get n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 24 times and then we'll have a minus 3 distributed right here so we'll have minus 3n squared plus 9n minus 6 and then plus 4n squared plus 2n minus 12 plus 6 minus 18n and the 24. And now, I would like to combine like terms. So, we'll have n minus 1 times n minus 2 over 24 times. And then the n squared terms will simplify down to n squared. The n terms will simplify down to 11 minus 18, which is 7n, like this. And then plus, and then the 6 will cancel out such that we can we will be left with 24 minus 12, which is 12. And now, we will factor this polynomial, this quadratic polynomial right here by using the quadratic formula. So, if we set n squared minus 7n plus 12 to be equal to 0, then our n will be equal to minus minus 7, so 7 plus or minus the square root of, and then minus 7 squared is 49, 
minus 4 times 1 times 12, which is 48, all over 2 times 1, which is 2. And now 49 minus 48 is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. Therefore, we'll be left with 7 plus minus 1 all over 2, which means if we take the positive branch, we get 8 plus 8 over 2, which is 4. And if we take the negative branch, we get n equals 3. Therefore, our sum will be equal to n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times n minus 4 all over 24. Okay, so we have our f5 of n, but let's put it into a nicer form. So first of all, 24 is simply 4 factorial because it's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then our numerator are simply the first four terms of the expansion of n minus 1 factorial. So this is simply n minus 1 factorial over n minus 5 factorial because all the n minus 5 to 1 terms are cancelled out. So we, so we will have n minus 1 factorial over 4 factorial times n minus 5 factorial. But then n minus 5 is simply n minus 1 minus 4 and this look exactly this looks exactly like the binomial coefficient and that's because it is a binomial coefficient therefore this is exactly n minus 1 choose 4 therefore our f5 of n will be n minus 1 choose 4 and now our design converts our f2 of n and our f3 of n into binomial coefficient form well it was simply to help us with our summations but then, as I said earlier, our f5 of n is exactly our f of n. Therefore, now that we have our f of n, we can erase the board and finally compute our summation. Okay, so now that we have our f of n, as I said, we can compute this summation. Therefore, our sum will be the sum as r goes from 1 to 11 of r times f of 11 minus r. And this will be simply the sum as n goes from 1 to 11 of r times plugging 11 minus 1 into here, we get 10 minus r choose 4. And then we'll just write out a few terms and see what we get. So we'll get 9 choose 4 plus plugging 2, 2 times 8 choose 4 plus all the way to eventually we get 2, 6 times 4 choose 4. And now after that, we have 5 times 3 choose 4, plus 4 times 2 choose 4. Uh, 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 sorry, I, I meant 7 times 2 choose 4, plus 8 times 2 choose 4, two, plus 9 times 1 choose 4, plus 10 times 0 choose 4, plus 11 times minus 1 choose 4. And now, for these terms, we cannot use the usual definition for the binomial coefficient, namely n choose, n choose k equals n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial because it only holds for n is greater than k is greater than or equal to zero. So this means for these last five terms, we'll have to use the alternative definition for the binomial coefficient, namely n choose k is equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times all the way to n minus k minus 1 all over k factorial. And now, if we plug in our, our 3 choose 4, we'll get 3 times 2 times 1, 2 all the way to minus 1 because it's 3 minus 4. But eventually, our third term for our product is zero, which means which means zero times multiplied by anything is zero. Therefore, this whole term is zero. Likewise, likewise for this term, using a similar argument, this term, and then for this zero, the same thing will hold. And for minus one, choose four we'll get n mi uh, minus 1 times minus 2 times minus 3 times minus 4 over 4 factorial. And the denominator evaluates to 24, 
which is exactly 4 factorial. Therefore, minus 1 choose 4 will be 4 factorial over 4 factorial, which is 1. Therefore, the, our minus 1 choose 4 is 1, which means this whole term is exactly 11. <coughs> Therefore, our sum is 11 plus all the non-zero terms, and we and 9 choose 4 plus 2 times 8 choose 4 plus 3 times 7 choose 4 plus 4 times 6 choose 4 plus 5 times 5 choose 4 plus 6 times 4 choose 4. And now I would like to make use of a trick to calculate all of these binomial coefficients and that trick is Pascal's triangle. So for those who don't know, Pascal's triangles are like this. Our zeroth row has a 1. Our second row, there's another point going by. Our second row has 1, 1. And for each subsequent row, the, the extreme numbers are 1, and all the middle numbers are equal to the sum of the two numbers above it. Therefore, we, here we have 2 because it's 1 plus 1. And then here we'll have a 1 and a 1. And then this term will be 1 plus 2, 3, 1 plus 2, 3. And then we'll get to 1, 1. And 1 plus 3 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 plus 1 is 4. And now, for those who don't know, this, Pas this Pascal's triangle is directly related to the binomial coefficients. Namely, for example, this, this is 0, to 0, 0, 1, choose 0, 1, choose 1. 2 choose 0, 2 choose 1, 2 choose 2, 3 choose 0, 3 choose 1, 3 choose 2, 3 choose 3. And this is 4 choose 0, 4 choose 2, 4 choose 3. Wait, no, this is 4 choose 0, 4 choose 1, 4 choose 2, 4 choose 3, and 4 choose 4. Therefore, our 4 choose 4 lies right here. And now, this means that basically, every, every entry in our binomial coefficient is basically the k entry starting at 0 of the nth row starting at 0. Therefore, our 4 choose 4 is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Therefore, it is 1. And for the next row, we get, I just farted, 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And then computing this again, we get 1, 2, 3, 4. For uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we get 5 right here. And now if we compute the sixth row, we get 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. And therefore our 6 choose 4 will be 15. And then we can see that all the numbers that we want lie on this diagonal right here. Therefore, our 7 choose 4 will be 20 plus 15, which is 35. Our 8 choose 4 will be, okay, this, this entry will be 15 plus 20, 45. Therefore, our next number will be 70. 70. So, this will be 70. 70. And then, for, for our final term, we'll have 20, 6 plus 15, 21. 21 plus 35, 56. Therefore, I have a marker shortage. 56 plus 70 is 126. Therefore, this is our 9 choose 4, 8 choose 4, 7 choose 4, 6 choose 4, 5 choose 4, 4 choose 4. And now, we have 11 plus 126 plus 2 times 70 plus 3 times 35 plus 4 times 15, plus 5 times 5, plus 6 times 1. Okay, and now from there on we'll use some mental arithmetic. So this term right here is 140, this term right here is, okay, so 2 times 35 is 70, add another 35 we get 105 and then for this term right here we get 4 times 15 which is 60 for this one we get 25 and for this one we just get a 6
And now we will use the trick that our secondary one teacher told us and got angry when we didn't use it. And it's called in French, because here we speak French, nombre compatible, which basically means compatible numbers. And compatible numbers are basically numbers such that their last digit adds up to 10 or 0. Therefore, we can see that 140 and 60 are compatible numbers, which and as are 105 and 125. So, our sum will be... so. These two add to 200. These two, 100 plus 25, add up to 130. And then we'll decompose these two terms. Why did I circle the 6? Like this. And now 11 can de be decomposed as 10 plus 1. And 126 can be decomposed as 120 plus 6. And then our 10 plus 20 is again a compatible compatible numbers 130. Add these three together, we get 200. We get 460. And then if we have the one, the six, and the six remaining, we are left with an answer of 473. But we want to express our answer in terms of a binomial coefficient. So, the natural idea that comes to mind is 473 choose 1. But, our Q, which is in this case our 1, has to be strictly greater than 6, which is not the case for 1. Therefore, we have to find an alternative way of expressing 473 into a binomial coefficient, and that alternative way will be 472. And this makes sense because this will be 473 factorial or 472 factorial times 1 factorial, which means uh, which means the 472 factorials will cancel out and we'll be left with 473. And therefore, our P is, is 473 and our Q is 472. Therefore, our P plus Q will be at the, at the 100 to get 800. At the 10 we get 140 and there's another plane going by. I don't know what's happening to my home as well. So again we get 140, so 940, and the 3 plus 2 is 945. Therefore they get an answer of 945. But in the textbook solution that they uh, that the person sent me, they actually reach an answer of 16 choose 10, which which is equivalent to 1 to 8008 and and I think from my calculation that they actually did a mistake in their work because what what their solution which I will link to in the description again if I remember to do so starts with clearly f of n is equal to n plus 4 choose 4 which already skipped a couple steps so that's pretty typical but n plus 4 choose 4 is simply when you expand it out n plus 1 times n plus 2 times n plus 3 times n plus 4 over 24. But this is n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times n minus 4 over 24. So I think that when they created this problem, they, they made a careless mistake and switched the minus signs into plus signs and calculated from there. So this means that even textbook, uh, textbook maker people do make mistakes and as for star walker from major decisions loves to say don't follow blindly don't follow blindly the official answer and mind your decision that's probably where he got his name from so well th that was an interesting problem from which which actually is a je advanced preparation problem so i think it does a pretty good job at for JDE because it's, it covers a lot of topics, so you have to know that. And well, if you're the person who sent me this problem or or anyone who's taking the JDE, best of luck on your JDE. And as always, this is your video. Bye.